Today we're going to take a look at two models that are making waves in the open source community, Flux Crea Dev and Quen Image. I know it's been a minute since my last video, so we're going to jump right into it. I'm a bit late with Flux Crea Dev. This was released a few weeks ago, and of course it's supported on Comfy UI. This was developed by Black Forest Labs with Crea in collaboration. Some of the things they highlight, unique aesthetics, no AI look. We all know that plastic skin look that Flux Dev tends to have. More natural details, no blown out highlights, exceptional realism and image quality. And the best part is it's compatible with the current Flux Dev architecture. So it should work with your LoRa's control nets, now, as I always say, make sure you update ComfyUI to its latest version and everything you need is going to be linked in the description below. So basically what you need to do is just drag and drop the workflow and then there'll be a note for where to get the models. Now, depending on your GPU, there are several versions that you want to download. If you want to use the original weights, which is similar to Flux Dev, just under 24 gigabytes, you can click on this link. The FP8 version is here. I also added the link on my workflow, the GGUF versions. And then your Clip L and T5 text encoders are listed here. Then you have your VAE. Now it's no different where you have to put them. If you go to your main Comfy UI folder under models, under diffusion models is where you want to put the full model or the FP8. If you're using the guff models, you want to put them under your unit folder. Text encoders go under text encoders. Your VAE goes under VAE. So very similar things. Again, it works just like Flux Dev. And if you look at the workflow, I'm actually using the Q8 uh, guff version. And if you look at my workflow, it should look similar. You have your unit loader here. If you decide to use the guff version, you need the city 96 unit loader, dual clip loader, load VAE, modeling sampling flux, which I've just left on default. I have the power lower loader from RG3. It works very well with the flux turbo alpha or the hyper LoRa as well. Flux guidance the SD3 empty latent image. And then I have a zero conditioning out here since it doesn't use negative prompts. So instead of using the clip text encoder for your negative prompt, we use this one to zero that out. Clip text encode for your prompt, just a simple case sampler here, VAE decode, and then our save image note. So your basic workflow. Now, if none of this makes any sense to you, I encourage you to check out my Comfy UI 101 series that goes through what all of these nodes are, where to put your models and all that stuff. I decided to do some comparisons between Flux Dev and Context Dev. Now, mind you, this isn't multimodal like Flux Context, but I did want to show you in terms of output how much better this is than Context Dev. In my opinion, Context Dev is like a step back, only useful for the iterative editing. The output is kind of crap, if I'll be honest with you. So if we look at the middle image here, that's always going to be Crea Dev. We see Flux Dev with a typical shiny face and Context Dev. It doesn't look bad, but again, it has that hyper realistic plastic look where Crea Dev looks natural. These next few examples, we're going to look at how it does with photorealism. I will say all versions are coherent in terms of following the prompt, but Crea Dev does have more of a natural look. Flux Dev looks pretty decent here. And then Context Dev in this photo looks okay. I mean, he's grabbing the blade here, but whatever. <laughs> You really see here context dev, especially when you zoom in that fake look where Crea dev again looks very natural. Even though the background is blurry, it's not as intense as flux dev that tends to over exaggerate it. However, I will say for flux dev, this image looks really good. Here you could really see context dev nerfed compared to pro and max. It has that 
plastic skin. Dev, once again, you can see that effect as well, although it doesn't look too bad. But with Kriya Dev, very realistic, very believable. Again, they sound repetitive, but looks very natural. With the car scenes, again, they all look great. This is actually where Context Dev looks a lot better. With Kriya Dev, you really get that sense of motion, looking like it's about to drift. And then Flux Dev here looks great as always. This is sort of like a splatter art, splash art type of technique that I always like to use. And I find with Kriya Dev, in terms of creativity, it does have more of an artistic flair. You'll start to see with Context Dev its limitations where it starts to look almost cartoony. Early SDXL days. It may sound like I'm shitting on Context Dev, but it's a crappy model, to be honest. Other than the iterative editing, the output is just terrible. We see that once again here with both Kriya and the original Flux. At least it has that sense of creativity. Not to say Context Dev looks bad, but again, it has that cartoony SDXL, SD 1.5 fine tune look. And it's quite far away from the prompt coherency where Kriya Dev is almost exactly as I prompted for it. And that's something I want to kind of emphasize where the prompt coherency for Kriya Dev is on another level, even compared to Flex Dev and Context Dev. You may or may not know, but Flex Dev tends to lean towards hyper realistic images. And it often gives sort of a cinematic feel. Not that this doesn't look great. It looks amazing. In context dev, oh, it's cute. <laughs> but again, Kriya Dev sticks to the prompt, to the style. Very impressive model. This prompt is inspired by the video game Horizon Zero Dawn. We have sort of a biomechanical panther here. And both models perform pretty well here, where we see context dev, again, being very cute and annoying. <laughs> Next, we'll take a look at Quen Image. This was also released, I'd say, a couple weeks ago. Some of the highlights known for its state-of-the-art text rendering and editing consistency, high-fidelity rendering of complex Chinese and English text, paragraphs, fine print layouts, and simply it's a versatile model. Now, be forewarned, the full BF16 model is a whopping 40 gigabytes, almost 41. Fortunately, there is an FP8 version at 20 gigabytes. And once again, in this workflow that I'll be linking in the description below, all the links you need will be here. I also inputted the GGUF versions. But in my examples uh, that you're about to see, I'm actually using the FP8 version, the 20 gigabyte file, and know that even on my GPU at eight gigabytes of VRAM, it runs pretty decently. Now for an 832 by 1152 image, I'm getting about two and a half minutes of generation time. So it's not the fastest, but I will talk about later on how we can increase that speed by using the LoRa's. So in terms of where to install these models is the same as we looked at with Kriya, where you're gonna put your main models in the diffusion models, TGUF under unit, LoRa's under LoRa's, so same old stuff, all right? In terms of the workflow, very similar to the Flex Kriya Dev one. We have our load diffusion model node, our clip loader here, VAE loader, MT latent. There's a LoRa loader here, which is off at the moment. Our clip texting codes and our negative prompt, although you don't really need it. This is probably a little bit different compared to your basic image generation workflow where it's using the model sampling or a flow node. And there's a note here that says that if you increase the shift, if you get blurry, dark, or bad images, decrease if you want to try increasing detail. I find that 3, 3.1 works pretty well, but you can experiment. Now in terms of sampler, you can just use Euler Simple or Beta. You can start with 20 steps, CFG two and a half to three I find works pretty well. And then I want you to make note down here where there's recommended settings for the K sampler. And if you do decide to use the lore, it is only eight steps and you can keep the CFG at 2.5. There is a little note here to set CFG to one for the speed boost at the cost of consistency. And you can also experiment with the res multi-step sampler. 
changing the CFG to one. So nothing too complicated, although the file sizes are a bit bigger. Now I get the sense this model wasn't really made for photorealism, although it can do it. Here's a similar prompt with a slightly different pose, but you see here that if I zoom in, you can almost see not artifacts, but kind of like a square pattern. And that could mean I just need to up my CFG or increase my steps or even adjust the model shift, right? These are all done with default settings. Here's an example, more 3D CGI. And I find it does 2D and 3D really well. It's got very clean details, clean lines. You now some models kind of have a grit and an edge to them. This model is not like that. It has a very clean look. Now it does really do well with complex text. Some models, when you have this much text, it starts to lose coherency. But you see here, it says, this is Quinn image, complex text rendering and precise image editing. And it's got it down exactly as prompted for. I did a similar one, except now it's on a notebook. And I find really cool that you can see the depth of field on the foreground and going into the background here. That's quite impressive, actually. I did try it with the Laura, and although it got the text right, did not put it on the wall. It could be just the way I prompted for it. It was a really simple prompt, but at least it got the text right. And then I tried the same prompt for the notebook, but you see a little bit of loss in details, right? It's just the text and white paper. It got the bindings, but at least the spelling and the accuracy is there. When I did the same prompts for Flux Crea Dev, this was more accurate. I wanted this part to be graffiti with Quinn, although the writing was accurate, it didn't necessarily do it in spray paint graffiti like Kriya Dev did. So in terms of creativity, I'll give it to Kriya. Mind you, again, it could have been the way I prompted for it using Quinn. And when I did this prompt, in the prompt, I wrote handwriting. And with Kriya Dev here, we see that it's done in handwriting. So that was quite impressive. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys have experienced with these models. I've also taken a look at Hydream. I'll probably just do a separate video for that. And hopefully sooner than later, I want to see how Kriya Dev performs with all the other ComfyUI workflows. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.